Proverbs 16.3, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. So whatever you do, that means you've got to do it in honor and glory to God. I mean, you're, will you live? Because you, because you don't want to really be lost and, and, and your plans will be established as long as you go out there and uh, commit what you do to the Lord. And, and, and uh, how does this relate to football? I'll tell you how it relates to football. Uh, you, what, when, when you go and you put in a good week of practice and you put in the commitment and the time uh, and the effort, then uh, everything you do will, will, will have results if you put in the time and the commitment and the effort. Uh, but if you don't, if you don't put in the time and the effort and the commitment, you're going to be lost out there on Friday night, and you're not going to have a clue uh, what's going on, and, and you're going to get your butt whooped. To just plain and simple. So, uh, but but wins and losses on Friday night is determined by the work that you put in uh, during the week, and and if you commit your your life to the Lord and uh, and your work. And uh, in closing, the preacher Paul says, commit yourself to the Lord and, and, and come out there Friday night and, and do the work and, and, and represent your program with, with, uh, with effort, determination, and let's go get that W. Coming to you live from Studio G in Hickman, Tennessee. I'm Rusty B. And this is Paul Martin, and you're in the huddle. That guy hut, over hut. there is Paul Martin. Hut. And you're in the huddle. And he's been jacked up about doing the day show in the rain. Uh, just like the game Friday night, and, uh, we had to get our rain gear on today to do the show. Uh, broke the umbrella earlier, Paul. Going to get you something to drink. Uh, you're probably going to owe me about $27 for that. But anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, we got to witness a good sloppy wet game, but we also got to see what? Our first W. First W, yeah. First W is on the board. One and two, right? Uh, so mo moving on to uh, who we got this week coming up? Trousdale County. Trousdale County. We'll be talking about that in our uh, second segment. Junior High didn't play last week, right? Right. They played Thursday night. They'll play Thursday night. Who they play? Monterey? They Who? played Watertown. Watertown, that's right. At I knew they forward. At home, so everybody get out and go go check that out. Um, had a different fan of the week this week. That's we'll right. We'll show that later on in the show. We're going to talk about that. And we, and we actually got Paul had a good post-game interview. We're going to talk about that at the end of this segment. All right. And, uh. We'll show that live interview in there and give our fan of the week. We'll do that at the, at the end of this episode, All right. this uh, segment. Uh, first off, Paul, let's talk about the W. We got it. Didn't get it easy. What I mean, What did you see happen out there? I mean, give us your point of view of the game. Well, we start we, to finish. Well, we took the uh, we took the opening coin toss. Uh, uh, had the ball first. Or no, no. Let me rephrase it. Let me let, let me rephrase that. We deferred. Well, we wound up getting the ball first second half. Uh, yeah. They took the football first, and uh, we uh, we caused them to have to punt it. And uh, then we took the ball our first drive. And if I'm not mistaken, we went right down and scored right off the bat, and we, we was up seven to nothing. Then uh, late in the first quarter, uh, the Bulldogs they answered. They went down and they got them six points. They went but, to, went for two and they was a little short. At that point, it was seven to six. Let's point out that they got that six point. They were playing hard, but we fumbled deep in our own territory. Around the twenty. Around the twenty, we were driving and uh, we fumbled deep and what took them seven eight plays. Right. And they scored on us, so uh, we really didn't give up nothing too easy. You know, right. they didn't drive uh, that, it down that score did come off of a turnover. Uh, yeah. And but at the end of the first quarter, though, nonetheless, it was seven to six. We us. gave our we gave our defense a short field and, and kind of put our back against the wall. But right. but defensively, though, uh, we did a better job against the pass. We gave up one one reception for about twenty nine yards. So uh, we really looked a lot better on that part of the game, uh, giving up just one catch. You know, we had a kid go down with uh, an ankle injury. And I, I actually never seen him come off the field. Uh, that was Ray. Er, he had to go down early in the game. And they brought in Skyshin, which we had talked about him last week. He come in and... Did a good job. Wouldn't lost, but did let the kid get behind him there that one time. 
But and, he did a good job. Uh, but uh, he, recovered. he recovered and didn't give up six points. And uh, come in actually played well, considering he'd been out for the last three or four weeks. As far as as far as tackling goes, I felt like we did a pretty good job tackling. We hey, uh, it's, it's hard to got, hold we on. We got some tackle for losses, and we uh, uh, we played the wing tee pretty pretty well. Uh, we, we said in the spring that uh, that we struggled in, a, in the a fall. Spring, it was early in the fall or in the fall against Moore County Moore against County. the wing tee. We looked we looked kind of lost terrible. out there. We looked kind of lost out there, but. Friday night, they, they, they made their adjustments, and they went out there, yeah. and they did a good job of stopping Red Bowling's wing tee and pretty good, done a pretty good job tackling. Not a bad night. We did put some more points on the board. Uh, uh, we put 28 up. 28. Won it 28 to 6. And that means, for uh, one, our extra point little kicker is he's Halliburton about, is what? He's about 6 for 6 this year. And then we got one field goal, and we right. tried one, right? We, we're one for one on field one goals as well, so our special oh. team kicker is doing a good job for us. We did go for two against Smith County, right? Right. One so, time, so, so we didn't we, get that uh, kick. We got a two-point conversion but as so well. So far, he's perfect on the season. He's kicking the ball deep, kicking it well. Uh, that's always a plus going into a big game like we are next Friday night. And, and another uh, thing I want to I want to add to to the Red Bull in session is uh, punting. Uh, we, 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 we figured that punting might be a, 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 a tough spot in the rain, but Adam did a great job for us right. punting the football in the rain. You know, I don't think there's going to be a – he shanked. We had a couple shanked early, right, again, maybe – was it Watertown? Uh, maybe, but I, – I remember shanking one or two. And, you know, that stuff happens early in the season, but he's really got to kicking the ball now, and he's kicking it well. I don't right. think there's been – I don't think you're going to see many punters that can kick the ball like he can in single line football because he can he's get punting probably about a 39 yard average anyway. Yeah, he got a boot into one another night and it just kept going. And and you know the hang time gives you a real advantage in punting. Why that you know people don't under, maybe you don't understand why it's important. The longer that ball's in the air, the better chance you got. The faster we go, the, the more chance we got to get downfield to cover that right. that punt, and they get no return yards. Which that's something that until you played, you don't really understand hang time. But when you've actually yeah. played the game, you understand that the longer it's in the air, the you know, even if you got to get down there and cover the ball, even if it goes thirty yards, right? If you can get at least a if you got a good hang time, that's right. If you get a good hang time under it, then you can get down there and cover key. it. And and he really gets some hang. He got into that first punt. I think it was the first one the other night. He got into that thing. Oh, I don't like to have to punt against Red Bowling. Right. But when you do, hey, that's a that's a big advantage when you got a punter that can punt it like that. And, and what do he do? Maybe put two or three inside the 20, so right. maybe one inside the five. Yeah, and, we, and he had actually done a great job the week before. We didn't mention it, but against Smith County, I think we pinned them deep a couple times. Right. You know, kicking uh, the ball. And that's down something there. that I just wanted to add to it. To and he works hard on it. You, you see that kid out there a lot after practice, he'd still be kicking that football. And you know that, and that goes back to what we talked about earlier about committing your work to the Lord. Co- co- it? Committing your work, he, he made a commitment uh, that I want to be a good punter and I want to go out right. here and do my job well. And that's that's what it takes is you have to you have to commit yourself to what you're doing and work on it. Not not just when you're at the practice field, you work on it at home anytime you can. Uh, what you know, these kids got the advantage of being able to watch game film anytime they want. You're right, and I actually oh. talked about that with one of our players uh, the other day. I said, "You guys got technology. You got the huddle. You uh, you guys can watch it, and and y'all and y'all don't That's even right. have to do it in practice. You can set yourself up some drills at home and do some practice at home on your yeah. time. Uh, you but, can learn. But these things really go far when it comes to having you can a good really football learn, team. You can really learn what the guy across from you is capable of when you watch his game film. Also, they have the ability to do that." They upload those and share a video. And you and I didn't have yeah. that when we played. But if oh, we, we actually had, a, had to go to the coach's office and get our butt ringed for what we did wrong. Yeah. A little bit of praise for what we did right. Right. And, but, and I, I used to do my share know, of that going to office. It was limited. I, we had a limited opportunity to do that. I don't know. Maybe 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 it's just I like getting my butt chewed. Just, uh, maybe, I, maybe I just like being around Coach Wills. Uh, maybe it was a little <laughs> bit of that. But uh, I couldn't get enough of the man. I mean, yeah. Well, Paul, we talked about earlier, you know, we was talking about this maybe last night or the night before we were together and talking, and you brought up Huddle and, yep. and the ability they have to do that. Absolutely. Uh, and I said if you and I had had that when we was playing, you told uh, me, we would have probably been who knows how good. Well, you made the statement you would have watched your the plays you went in on a hundred times. I and I believe would, I probably would have because uh, – 
Because I had the problem when uh, my problem was when I went to rush the passer, I, I couldn't keep from tripping over my own feet. So so I would have at least well, what, watched myself a hundred times to what figure size out a way it? to keep my feet underneath me. What size are those boats, Paul? It's like a I got a size thirteen. Size thirteen. But but when in school, I might have been a eight and a half, ten something. So I you've grown know. that much since you? Yeah, but uh, I tell everybody I'm still growing. You know. Well, I am still going. <laughs> yeah, me too. We, we but just keep but nonetheless, bigger. though, uh, that that, that kind of huddle, though, it can give you a tips on what you're doing wrong. You can see, you can work on your footwork because you can see why you're tripping. Yeah, you can actually see well, your mistakes and fix those at home, and uh, and that'll help you. Hey, it, that's that's a great feature to have, and it's a good thing that the the school pays for that and allows them so, students uh, to do uh, that. The athletes, Rusty and I's advice to you guys. Take advantage of the technology you're exactly. given. Exactly. I mean, you're going to look back. Some, some kids going to look back and regret not doing it more. And, if, and you, if you can set up some drills at home to work on your quickness off the ball, but be, feel free to do that too. Yeah. You know, that's one thing I noticed. Uh, I watched a little bit of Charles County and these look, guys are friendship. Really- yeah, we watched and then, the and, and then a little bit of Charles County and Watertown. But these guys are quick off the ball. We, they we, were we beating that. They were beating Watertown off football, which is something we didn't do. And you know, we we had a lot of pass blocking in there that week because we really didn't throw in the run game until the next week against Smith County. And you know, Charles County is quick off football, and we're going to have to be quick off football if we're going to have a chance to beat them. But any game and, you're playing, you uh, it, it's as simple as being uh, when you're blocking, you got to be quick off the ball and whoop the man in front of you. And when you're when you're right. playing defense, you still got to be quick off the ball it's, and beat your man. It's hard to be quick off the ball too when you're playing uh, uh, a team like Red Bowling in the conditions we played in. Oh, that field was just. Uh, a muddy mess. But we did a good job getting quick off and the ball. We had tackle for losses, we and did. we got back there. Our defense really uh, – Hunter Vault stood out in my mind. He he got after the football. He was breaking through the line. Uh, I know he was back there several times. I did see a few tackles, tackles for losses. losses. So you, you and we had other kids there. as well, but he's just one that stood out. And it seemed like even if he didn't make the tackle, he was through the line of scrimmage. And – that's you what know, you that like puts to see. a little pressure and, and messes up some time and things like that. And you, you know, like to see that, and we want to see exactly. it continue as the year goes along. We got to, I'd like to see it Friday night, you know, coming up. And right, uh, we got a little rain outside right now, Paul. Maybe all this will go away before Friday night. It's supposed to. Um, uh, maybe it will, and it'll dry out well. But but uh, the good news about our field, though. the good news about our field is. We got, what, four weeks, three to four weeks? No, actually, our field's going to be used this Thursday night by the junior high. Yeah, but I mean, as far as our high school games, high school being played. You're right. We don't play again on uh, as the high school kids don't until September the 29th against, uh, I think, Monterey. Monterey. So, that'll be homecoming also. Yeah. And then 29th. All right. Yeah, probably, and that's probably Monterey game. Um, yeah. But. Anyway, uh. But like, like Going back again, you, you're talking about somebody come up big and uh, our special teams came up big the other night. Uh, we had one. We Well, we had a kickoff return for a touchdown That's for right. 88 yards. But, Paul predicted that. Uh, but but, uh, but I did out. see, I, I went back and looked at it, and, and the referee was right to throw the block in the back. But but the, uh, there wasn't no sense in that because uh, the guy that did the block in the back, uh, he, he, he done run by that guy, yeah. so there wasn't no sense in it. You know, we witnessed that too in the state championship game. And, you know, you're told as a football player you want to hit somebody. And there's a but, time to hit somebody. But when, your man, right when your that's man right. that's returned the ball is already by the guy, then there's no sense in hitting well, him it in the took, back. Well, it took six points off. That, that one block took six points off the board, possibly seven. You see, so I mean, it put you really let your team down when you do that, and I, and if he's got no chance at making a tackle, there's no point in blocking him. That's what I'm saying, right? I mean, he's already blocked. So that should have been six points on the board, yeah. uh, theoretically. So and that was Daniel Welch that returned that. How long? How far did you say? Chris that? Welch. Or said Chris, Daniel. I said Daniel. I've been talking to Daniel this morning. Chris on the phone. Welch. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say it was probably at least a good 88 yards. You think? That probably. Far? I don't know where the ball went to. I don't know. We'll just call it 88. But well, it, I'll let but, you but call he it went, 88. he went a long, long way and, and was running with authority. Yeah. And, and, I, know, and I actually, the I one actually thing, predicted this kid was going to do it. Uh, now, now we know it got called back and it didn't count. But, but nonetheless, 
after watching he the didn't, jamboree, he after didn't watching get to the, the jamboree and watching this kid carry the ball, watching this kid carry the ball in Macon County, I knew right then after seeing him carry the first co- couple of carries, this guy's got speed and he's going to break a kick return before this yeah. year's over. Well, a, a thing too, Paul, it's not just about speed on a kickoff return. It helps big time. Uh, one thing is getting upfield. Uh, when you and run, he gets upfield well. When you run side to side, it makes it easy for those guys to tackle you. People don't realize and that they're kicking it sideways too because they want yeah. to keep you at an angle. When you're running straight upfield and that guy's got a, he's he might miss the angle to get to you, you know, and it, it just it's a lot harder to make a tackle when you're running wide open straight at somebody, and you see it time and time again, and they it happens toward every the sidelines year to try to keep you at an Our angle. Kid, listen, we'll have kids that's returning the kickoff and they'll run up wide open and then they'll just stop and try to dance. And he didn't do that Friday night. He didn't. He, he didn't do that. Up field and kept that going. That's why he found himself in the end zone, also. But with those kids that dance around, they're never going to return a kick. But and, mine and, and Rusty's point, we we were making two points. Number one, uh, get up field get and, up and don't field. stop running. And that's number right. two, don't make block in the backs that uh, that ain't necessary. Yeah, we did that in the state championship game. If you remember, was it right before halftime? We blocked the. Uh, Punt. And took it all the way and, and got it called took it back all the way and lot in the back. Had it called back. And it just, you know, that put us in a bind then. Um, I mean, you're taught to go block people, but block them in front. And uh, uh, and if the guy that you're trying to block has already been whipped and he's already he's behind 20 yards behind him, then leave him alone. That's right. And I'm sure the coaches will go over that with him and, and just reiterate that point. But, but but later on in the game, uh, we held them. They punted, and we got our special teams play anyway. Uh, it seemed like Bill Washer called them asleep. But, you know, it was like it was one of them games where you were. It's almost best to let the ball hit the ground in the rain because why give it to them? You know, why why take a chance at catching a wet football and, and when it's going to hit the ground and, and die? And then Bill just decides, uh, hey, I've let the ball hit the ground all night. Roll. And they just uh, slowed up. They're, they're slowed up. They're stalling out, so I'm just going to yeah. take it and go. They run down to cover the punt, and the ball hits the ground, and they just kind of stop and freeze for a second to go. But this particular and punt, Bill though, picks he, catches it up and takes off with it. he catches it in the air and says, I'm going. Yeah, he just kind of caught him off guard. And, uh, and he does he, he, What did he do? He didn't dance. He got upfield, made went a play. straight upfield, and got in the end zone. So that's our point. If oh, punt you returns, want to return kickoffs, kick returns, great uh, kickoff you've return got to, team. You got to just go upfield. Don't you do hit no the, dancing. Just go straight upfield. And, hit up and field. Keep on running. That's right. You got to get upfield, and that, that's just the way it is. Uh, uh, so, Paul, talk about this defensive player of the game, and I'm going to go on here. So, Hunter Vault. And I'm going to Hunter yeah, see if I can is, import this. Hunter Vault is the defensive player of the game, uh, and he and he was predicted in the uh, uh, the preseason to be a Mister Football Canada, and uh, you know he, uh, he he stepped up for us Friday night and come in there and got some tackle I mean, losses, and he really he really controlled the line of scrimmage on defense for us. And we def- we definitely want to see more of that. Uh, we want to see him get in there on defense and manhandle the line of scrimmage and get in there and sa- get some quarterback sacks and get some tackle for losses and maybe even a fumble recovery or two. Yeah. But uh, I would like to see that kid uh, live up to the hype and live up to expectations and go out there and have a great year. Yeah. Now, you was talking about this, too. You've seen somewhere that uh... – was it Braxton is what in the state in rushing right now? Braxton is number three in the state right now with 527 yards. And the two guys that are leading the way are tied with 532 yards. So he's five yards out of uh, the lead so in third. So essentially he's second place if they're tied for first. Well, yeah, he's second place so, and, and they got a tie with uh, the lead at 532 yeah. yards. So that's good, man. He'll keep that up. You know, he probably would have had more yards if it hadn't been for the conditions. Also, he he slipped and fell, and you know, a but, kid like uh, that that's so explosive when he's cutting and stuff like that, it makes it hard to play in the rain. But one hundred and seventy five point six yards a game is what what the kids averaging, and uh, hey, we'll take that one hundred seventy five point six a game. Oh yeah, well, definitely any day of the week. Um, I'm trying to pull up the picture shot here of. Uh, Paul Martin and the fan of the week. But uh I've got that somewhere it's right here. You, you know, like I said, uh, I, I'm not I'm not downgrading that hundred and seventy five point six a game or whatever is bad, but when you're carrying the ball 
I don't know, 35 to 40 times a game, you you about you about need to get 200 to 250 about every game with them kind of carries because you need to average at least four or five a carry. Yeah, well, there was times of the night, like I said, he was slipping and falling. But now I will give him the benefit of the doubt, though. It was a wet, rainy surface, so that that that's gonna that's gonna take away some of your yardage. And oh, and, I, and I actually think I actually think if it had been a dry surface, the kid would have went over two hundred easy. You know, we had some holes there. We we had the holes. Oh, uh, right, we blocked them well. I mean, yeah. uh, the ball, the holes was open, and and you know, I I feel like. Even even Halliburton on a run, he got outside, but I feel like I feel like he might have made a bad cut because I feel like if he kept on coming straight, he'd have scored. But he but he couldn't yeah. out to the sideline, and and that, but that's just stuff you learn with experience. That uh, hey, I've got to keep on coming. I can't try to dance out toward the sideline. That's right. And you know, that's one thing we're talking about getting upfield. You do that on a running play too, on those little jet sweeps and stuff like that. Your goal is to turn upfield and go. You don't really want to be trying to uh, cut toward the toward the sideline because when you do that, that just cuts off your speed. Exactly. All right, you Paul, just want to keep I'll, coming upfield. I think I found the picture, and we're going to let you introduce the fan of the week here. Let me go ahead and pull it up. I've got to... Uh, well, when when I introduce this man, do you uh, uh, do you want to talk about his his legacy at Gorgeville football? You, you can talk because, about his legacy uh, all you cause, want. Because uh, I I didn't play with him. I think you might have played. A few I did. Years he was younger. He was younger. He played. You might have played a few years with him, but I actually, he, we I actually, actually t- didn't play with him and didn't really remember a whole lot about his career. We talked about the uh, the rain game. Go ahead and introduce him. Tell me who the fan of the week was. All right. So the fan of the week this week is a uh, uh, a longtime Gorgeville Tiger. Uh, Player. He's always on the hill, and, and he's also a fan. Uh, it's Mr. Matthew Bush. That's and, right. His, his brother, Coach and his Bush. brother is a, is one of the coaches, I believe, That's Jonathan right. Bush. That's right. But Matthew, if I'm not mistaken, Matthew was a wide receiver. Is that correct? He played tight end, uh, defensive end, a uh, little wide out. Well, I, I I never had the opportunity to play with Matthew, so Rusty, uh, tell her tell her viewers about uh, Matthew and what kind of player hey, uh, he was. Matthew was a tough kid. One thing about Matthew, and even to this day, no matter what you, wherever you see him, he's always smiling, and he's just got this big smile. I did notice and, that. Uh, you know, the few times I, I didn't say that, that that I noticed he wasn't smiling is when we got beat. <laughs> you know, and that goes, and, and that's the way it ought to be. Yeah, that's uh, the way it ought to be. You ought not go out out smiling at a place yeah. when you got your tail kicked, because true blue gorgeous right. fans. They do not. They well, we do were not taught, like getting their butt whooped. That's one thing we were we were taught growing up is that you hate to lose. You learn to hate to lose. Coach Wills, coach, coach. If you don't hate to lose, you got problems. That's right. Coach Wills coached you and I both, and and, and one thing he uh, one thing he instilled in us, and he instilled in himself. I don't like losing, and when when I lose, it freaking stinks. That's right. And we still to this day, if you see us lose a game, and you see me walking out with my head held down, it's because uh, uh still to this day, Rusty and I hate losing. Well, I hate to lose. I don't care what I'm playing. <laughs> All right. Well, Paul, I'm more. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna get that video. We'll upload it and just let it play through. Uh, we might do that during our little commercial break for the first segment. And uh, but in closing, uh. <clears throat> That that's about all. That's about all I, I got to say about that game. Cause uh, uh, hey, it's behind us. Cause we it's won. behind us. We won the game, and and I've pretty much said all I all I know to say about yeah. it. So uh, pretty good game. We had some. We done some good things. So going into going into next Friday, uh, uh, bring your popcorn. It's gonna be a show. Yeah. Well, we're gonna talk about the for coming up. So I'll be just a minute, and uh, we're gonna take a commercial break. And we'll be right back. And you're listening to Huddle. Hut Hut. Hut Hut. Uncle B.S. says week four, Trousdale County. Hartsville was founded in 1817 by old John Hart, who best known for banging three roosters and a goat. He also made corn whiskey on some hill along what we now call Tennessee State Highway 10. Mr. Hart paved the way for the first package store in Trousdale and the surrounding counties. Hartsville... Fans count state championships like fans of the University of Alabama because in the minds of Yellow Jacket and Tide fans, they are the only ones to ever win one. Hartsville also hung a sign about some kind of some kind of school system state award as you come into town from the east. 
Old Uncle B.S. heard that old Satterfield coach, who is now the superintendent, wears a pinky ring to celebrate that fake championship. Now to the game. Uncle B.S. didn't give our Tigers much of a shot last year when the Yellow Jackets came to title town, but our Tigers shocked the world with a shutout win, which led to a shit storm in Hartsford that culminated with a gas scandal uh, for the ages and a fired coach. Nobody's given the 2017 Tigers much of a shot at the Creek Bank. I say all county employees in Troutville County better hope that they have their I's dotted and T's crossed because it might be their ass next week. <laughs> Tigers 22, Jackets 20. I just want to hear Paul say banging three roosters and a goat. Hey, this is Paul. You reached in the huddle. Hey, man. Rain old bun here, man. Y'all remember me? Uh, I just calling in to tell y'all, man. Uh, last week, good game, good performance, man. Uh, Come out there against uh, Red Springs, man, and put on a good show. Uh, like to have scored a lot more points than that, man, but hey, uh, they played tough and hung tough in the rain, and, and it's, you know, it come out to, to be whoever held the slippery balls, uh, whoever held that the best was going to win that game, man. Uh, and it seems like, you know, maybe we, we held it a little better than they did and moved the ball a little better than they did, and, uh, uh, the the little twenty eight man couldn't quite get his foot and get going there. He probably had about three hundred. Uh, anyway, man, uh, sitting on the couch at night thinking, uh, watching that game, man. I said, man, you know, uh, this reminds me of that old song, you know, from uh, Ernest P. Worrell sang it. Jim Varney, who is my hero and an American legend. Uh, gee, I'm glad it's raining, man. So it's a good song, probably one of my favorite. Man, it makes me cry a lot. Uh, played it at my uh, grandpa's funeral, you know, a while back, and uh, back when he passed away, played that, gee, I'm glad it's raining, because it hides the teardrops and stuff, uh, but anyway, man, uh, Ernest had some good lines from that, and uh, taking over, and you watch that movie, if you ever go back and watch that movie, man, that is a great movie, uh, gets me fired up and jacked up, you got a big game coming up Friday night, maybe you boys can, can you know, parfait that into uh, that song and movie, you know, into some good inspiration, man, because it is a very inspirational movie to me, man, I just gonna call and tell y'all, good game last week, good luck Friday night, man, down on the creek bank, uh, hey, effort pays off, man, just go ahead and get it in there, and, and, and get your effort out there, and lay it all on the line. And uh, don't forget, boys, to brood up. Uh, it's going to be their homecoming. They'll probably be brooded up for the little women. Uh, but, you know, I think they might wear some of this new stuff. And it's not quite as good as brute. You know, maybe the they wearing uh, that Calvin, Calvin Climber. And just, you know, that Calvin Climb ain't going to work. It's all about brute. So brood up. Get out there. And uh, put forth a lot of effort, and you boys walk away at with a W out there. And when we have that second W, you know, and then we'll be on our way to opening up that website we've been talking about with the WWW. So as soon as we get that three W's, we can start uh, going with Tigers.com or something other like that. But uh, I'm going to let you boys go and get back at it, man. I'm going to watch the rest of your show. Uh, Y'all boys uh, have a good one. All right, Paul, welcome back to In the Huddle. Um, this segment, we're going to be talking about the big Trousdale County game coming up Friday night. Yeah. Uh, Reno Bunn there just gave us a few tips and tricks. Maybe we could relate that to a movie. Um, first off, let's talk a little football. We, we, we'll just see what we can do to, you know, par, parlay, I think is what he meant to say in there. Uh, parlay this, uh, maybe if you've ever seen it, it'll motivate you to uh, maybe put a little more effort into what you're doing. But... We did watch a little bit of uh, Huddle on uh, with Trousdale and uh, Friendship. And Watertown. And a little bit of Watertown. And they got a good football team. Yeah. They hung with Friendship, who was 20, was it 20 to 16? That's correct. And Friendship is, they've got a they got a fine football team there. And, you know, Watertown beat us 20-0, 20 20 which I think we might have. I don't know that our uh, – Running game ever got going like it should have, and maybe that would have uh, made it closer. Made it a little closer. Maybe we could have pulled off a win there. And uh, 
Charles also played them without. I thought I don't think their quarterback, the starting quarterback, right. was in Watertown there. Watertown starting quarterback was out, and that, yeah. that makes a big difference. Yeah, it Auburn. makes a huge difference at, in smaller high schools and stuff. Pretty much, uh, uh, theoretically, when you lose your quarterback, then you pretty much lose your season ninety percent of the time. Ninety percent of the time. Uh, I think I think with us we'd be all right if, if you stick to a running game. You know, if it, if it revolves around that, because really it's knowing the plays and handing the ball off and things like that. Right. Uh, we do need to be able to throw the ball a little bit. You have to be able to get out of those situations because you're not always going to be able to run it. We've talked about that before, uh, so we won't really get into that. But looking back at last week, at the th- you take the things you do well. Um, you know, it was a rainy game. This week, the weather's supposed to be a little bit clear for Friday night. We hope so. We hope so. So far, the the outlook looks good for Friday night. But we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. Uh, Bill Hall's lied to me before. I laid out of school one time because Bill me stayed up. Uh, me and my old neighbor over here, Alex Williams, stayed up all night playing video games thinking, you know, it was about a 90% chance of snow or 100%, I think. And it never snowed. And then... I think about midday, I was wore out at school. I think about midday, it started snowing, and he was way off on his prediction. So that that stuff happens, too. So maybe the weather will cooperate with us. Um, coming into Friday night, who are we going to have to look for uh, with Trousdale County, their athletes? Well, they got number eight, uh, which is a kid named Cavante Baines. Cavante Baines, and, and he's a good athlete. Got, then they got a number five and number two, which I don't really know their names, but... Uh, uh, I think the number five is actually a freshman, is what Sam was telling us when he was watching Huddle. But nonetheless, uh, so, these guys pretty can, good athlete. can run and, and, and they can catch, too. They can they can throw the ball. You know, they, they really did throw the ball well, you know, and against friendship especially. Uh, they threw the ball well. When coming from that style of offense, you don't see a whole lot of pass plays, but they can throw it when they need to, so that'll help. Um, we'll have to defend against that. And what happens, a lot of times the – that style of offense will try to lull you to sleep and get your safeties creeping up, thinking run, 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 and then they'll hit one over the top. So if you're playing the secondary, beware of that. Always don't let the guy run by you. Well, the plays that I see a lot of, well, when they were throwing it, they ran the screen pass. Uh, screen, for yep. some big yardage. And, and actually on the screen pass, I believe it was number two. I am I might be wrong. Don't hold me to it. But I want to think it might have been number two called a pass and went about 70-something yards for a touchdown. So, yeah. so you got to watch the screen. And then they also run, uh, I guess, what we used to call a flag route uh, where they'll just kind of run about a 16-yard route and just curl out to the sideline, a flag route. Yeah. Uh, of course, you're going to see some crossing routes, maybe some slants. Uh, but but one thing that you have to that we've seen on film is they're really fast and they're athletic and they can move. Yep, you got to string the, you got to string this team out, which we did a good job of that last year. Uh, those two ends have they've gone on to uh, bigger and better things and graduated two new ends. And actually, we got a couple kids that's been playing the ends, and uh, you know they're going to step up Friday night and play football. That's a definite and thing. You've got to you, swarm to the football. That's a definite thing that you that you have, might have some concerns about with young guys is how well can they string out the wing tee and how well can yeah. they get to the football. I know we didn't we didn't do we well against young. it. We didn't do well against it at Moore County, but that's probably the first time they, that a lot of those kids had seen the wing tee that had started. So um, anyway, with that in mind. But one thing about the wing tee that yeah. you and I both know, you got to be disciplined and you got to uh, read your. Oh, it takes and, a. And uh, don't get caught up on uh, the fakes and all that. Yeah, you get, well. The one thing with the wing tee, you got to find the football. A lot of time, who, who that's the biggest question with the wing tee. Uh, who's got who's the ball? Got who's got the ball? You know, uh, it ain't like some backyard football. It's it's old timey football, really. Uh, but who's got the football? And you got to find that, and be able to identify it and quick. You know, against uh, I think with Smith County, we had a kid that lost the football. And, and it's basically a read option. You're going to see the same stuff, um, I, but from under center. You know, and uh, I, I can't remember who it was, but he, he bit down on the fake inside. The air corner come up. It might have been last week's player of the game, Bill Washer. He come up to the line of scrimmage and kind of went inside, and then the quarterback just run outside of him. 
against Smith County, I believe. You got the wrong. You got the wrong play. That was that was a pitch out option to to the uh, Shamara King kid, and the Shamara King kid went seventy yards. No, it was the quarterback right down near the end zone. Uh, the first, I think it was the first time they scored. All right, you all right, you are right. That yeah. was that was about the one down there where where they got it called back, and then they went on back and threw the tight end. That's and right. It was wide open, but but still, you're you're right. right on that play. They just yeah, we got played, sucked played inside. And went completely around the corner, wide open, touchdown. Yeah, but, yeah. We got sucked inside. I think we got cone hunters out here on the creek bank, you know, all night long. So our dogs are gonna go nuts. But that'd be all right. We, yeah, we'll still we, talk. we've we've done the show with barking dogs in the background before. I might give you a stick and go out there and beat him if you want to. You ever beat a dog? I'm not gonna beat that dog. <laughs> but uh, they're getting pretty rowdy up here. But uh, regardless, playing the wing tee does take a lot of discipline, as you just said, and knowing your assignments and and doing them. I mean, you got you almost have to play every play perfect, and that's what it takes to beat a team like Hartsville. Last year, I think we played almost every play as good as you could have played it. Shut out, win last year. What nine to nothing? Right. Um, you know that the shutout was just a bonus last year because we we actually played some good football. Um. Another thing that we really got to do is we got to be quick off the football on offense and defense because uh, – Yes, that's, that's true. We, we do. We got to be quick off the football. You know, they beat Watertown. They were beating Watertown off football every play. Offense and defense was, was whipping Watertown off football. And even Friendship, who was – they were firing off the ball, but that still it made that game close because they were, they were both firing off football. And – Defensively, you've really got to be prepared. You know, we watched the UT game together, playing Georgia Tech. That's they great. run a wing T style offense. Uh, one thing Tennessee did was back off football. I personally don't like doing that because you give up some yardage, but if it works, it works. Um, and, and they really thing. didn't slow down Georgia Tech the other night, and they were backed up at least a yard and a half, two yards off the football. Right off the bat. And another thing I think that we need to we need to stress on is the fact that I believe uh, these young kids uh, with Trousdale giving up a size advantage, you might want to look for them to try to cut block you. They may try to cut block you yeah. and go into your legs and chop you down. Yeah. Well, backing backing off football prevents a lot of that. So you need to be low. Uh, you need to get low to the ground and, yeah. and and really dive in because that'll avoid that cut block. If you get low enough, they yeah. won't be able to cut you. That's right. But. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, I think that's maybe why Tennessee was doing that the other night is to avoid the, the cut, cut block. block, just you know backing off the ball a little bit. Um, but if but if for the ones that's never been cut block, it ain't fun. It ain't fun. Uh, I've been cut. It's not fun. Eventually, you'll learn to uh, just step on the guy's back when he starts putting his head down and going. And then you step on his back and just you know play around. Ride right him right in the damn brain. <laughs> that's right. It just make him pay for it. That was always my theory. I had a kid always cutting me hard. It was actually a Trousel County. And he cut me about three times, and I learned real quick. I'm just going to wait on him to dive into the ground. That's I'm going to step my, on his back. That's what my dad was. Daddy always taught him, too. Daddy Daddy was a football player, and he was a yeah. defensive lineman. And uh, uh, his daddy would come watch him play, and, and my dad would always complain, they're cutting me, daddy. They're cutting me. They're yeah. cutting me. And, yeah. and, and daddy once told uh, – his daddy told him, he said – well, I'll tell you how you stop that, son. You take your daggum hand and shove his nose right in that mud, and I guarantee you, you'll stop yeah. that cut blocking. You, well, the thing is, you you find a way, you find a way to not get blocked. You know, and 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 that's like you have to find a way to win. Right, but that's, that's that's the different kind of blocking though that these guys yeah. are used to seeing. Probably, probably they're not used to being cut blocked. Yeah, but you know, those things, those things. Uh, on the line of scrimmage, they they can be prevented if you know how to attack. I'm sure they've went over that. Um, but watch out practice. for that cut block. Yeah, you got to be aware of that. Uh, I think we got a dog fight going on outside, but we'll be all right. They'll protect us, Paul. The, if somebody's out there, they might not get us. You know. Uh, regardless, though, we're going getting back to football. Last week, you were talking to a. I'm going to have to go see what they're doing. All right, let me catch my breath. We're still recording. We'll, we'll edit like that. All right, three, two, one. All right, Paul, I'm back. I'm out of breath. 
We just had an incident. I thought it was a dog fight. It almost turned out to be a massacre outside. And, you know, they were growling and barking. And I wanted to check out what was wrong. So I head over there and they're all just got their eyes underneath my car. And I'm thinking, something's under my car. So the dogs are, you know, they're swarming around the car. What out goes one side of the car, look like a possum, right? I'm thinking, man, they're going to kill a possum. Well, the possum runs back under the car, and they're all looking under this little trailer. And I go to the other side of the car, and I'm standing there, and out right, right across my feet comes an armadillo. And he runs right across my feet, and the dogs, are, you know, they're attack mode. And finally, we I got calmed down. I had to run in the house for a minute, you know, check my drawers. But I'm good, ready to do the show again. All right. All right. So I forgot where we were. We were talking about the wing tee and all the good stuff that goes along with it. Well, we don't have to be in the, We don't have to remember where we was. We can right. talk about it. Anyway, going, going back to who the – what did we uh, – Discussed last week the player of the game. Bill Washer. Bill Washer was your player of the game. Tell everybody why. Because he had a 38-yard punt return for a touchdown. Yeah. Now, on the flip side, this Paul predicted this, a special teams touchdown. All right. And the reason we scored a touchdown was getting upfield, right? Right. Well, you know, we discussed that. Uh, Welch would have been the player of the game, or would Washer have been the player of the game, had that block in the back not happened. When it, you know. I would co player of the game. I would have done a co player of the game co-player definitely of the because game. they both uh, they both would have stood out in my mind, and I would have grabbed both of them <laughs> up there, over there and give them a big hug and give them both an interview. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe maybe you know this week we'll have two or three kids you can line up and interview. Maybe they'll have a good game. You know, right? Do something outstanding, and make a right, play. Right. Maybe we could do like a Michelle. Just Tafoya, line them up Tafoya Tafoya they, does. Yeah, just maybe get, we could do like Michelle Tafoya does on Sunday Night Football, where she where she where, where she goes in there and says. I've got three players right here. I'm gonna do a little quick interview with y'all. Are the players of the game? Uh, yeah. Uh, first, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with you, Braxton. You had a you had a big night running the ball. Well, tonight. we could probably <laughs> we could probably mention Braxton Braxton's name every week on this show, right? Because so, so, I mean, uh, unless and, you want, unless you want to interview the kid every single week, you know, he's a, he's a standout. No, there's no point, right? And and he's a good humble kid about it. Uh, what but no, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say if we're gonna do interviews all during the year, we might not grab him one yeah. week and, and oh, yeah, do a quick new interview with him. Yeah, he's gonna have a he's gonna have a, a He's gonna get on the show some week and have yeah, an interview. Yeah. I expect him to bust out a two hundred and fifty yard game again for long. If he does and he and he and he breaks a big night like some uh, eighty yard touchdown run or something, then I'll go get him and uh have a chat with him. But uh you know I Yeah. I'm getting about ready. I'm getting about ready to get a defensive player and go get yeah. a defensive player and have a chance. Hey, last week Hunter Vault played as good a defense as you're going to see. Maybe, maybe we'll have a good defensive effort Friday night, and I'll get to grab me a defensive player and, and yeah. do an interview. He had an excellent game last week. Last Friday night, he was in the backfield a lot, uh, miss disrupting some timing and all that good stuff. But anyway, Bill Washer had your uh, player of the game in your interview. We're going to pause real quick and. Uh, let the let the fans and the viewers watch that video, and uh, we'll be right back. All right. You felt pretty good, I reckon. That's that's right. You are the in the huddle oh, player of the game. Get over here. What's the line? In the huddle. Am I? Hello, get, get, get over here. You get over here. You get a picture. <laughs> this ain't a picture, Paul. This is video. Oh, it's a video. Oh well, he's still in it. You got any more questions? <laughs> You got any more questions for me? <laughs> you gonna make a big play against Crowsdale next week? If they punt it to me, I will. <laughs> we need to do the double flat pass. Okay? What is that? That's where that's where we throw it to McKinley. McKinley throws it across the field. It's kind of like a Music City miracle, and you're gonna take it to the house, son. <laughs> <laughs> He's freezing to death, Are you done? Yeah, I ain't good at interviews. <laughs> See, what See, you know. <laughs> All right, Paul, we're back, and uh, that was, you know, a half-hearted effort on your part in the interview. You didn't do so well. I didn't, uh, but that was my first one. You had to, y'all have to bear with me. I'll, I'll try Bill, to do better. Bill was froze to death. The cold rain had him freezing. You were in a big orange carrot poncho. Yeah. Uh, you know, it just the the camera work was terrible with the phone switching 
sideways. We're going to we're gonna have to work on this. And, uh, you know, maybe one day we can get one of these kids to come over and join us on in the huddle here. Uh, maybe after a practice or something. We do film this sometimes late at night. Uh, late in the evenings, I say late at night, but late in the evenings. Yeah, I, I uh, think that would be awesome to have one of our. So if any of them's interested, on, uh, on our show, Paul, Paul Martin will probably message you and ask you if you're interested. And we 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 got a studio here on the Creek Bank slash sign shop. But if y'all are any, any of y'all interested, holler at <laughs> Sam. Let him uh, let him know. And, uh, uh, we might get we, Sam we'll out get here you, next week. We'll get you on the show. Uh, any of you, and, and, you know, and you know if Tristan Tristan Pope, if you're interested. Uh, Maybe get some beans I, on the stove, I, and I don't, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't advertise for Rusty and Jen all of them, but um, they might make you some beans and taters if you come over yeah. here and join us. Hey, we could. I'm not a cook, but uh, we could we always might be able to hook you up for something. I'm a Pizza Hut kind of guy. You know, I I could go get us uh, the family box at Pizza Hut, and we could sit down in here, me, you, and Paul, and have a big time. You know, and you can sit over here in the chair with next yeah. to me and uh, uh, tell us about uh, what Gornful football means to you, and we'll just have a big chat, get and a, some pizza. That's right, get an inside look at what in the huddle really looks like in this studio because it does not look exactly like you're saying, I promise. Right, and, and oh. the fact, and the fact is, and we'd like to know, we'd like more know more about the Tigers. So please, uh, if y'all, if y'all, if y'all ain't bashful, come on over here and have an interview with us and tell us a little bit about yourselves. That's right. <laughs> um. Paul, we, we uh, Reno Bunn had mentioned something. We're gonna go ahead and jump into this. He had he brought up a good point about the movie. Uh, what was the name of that movie? Ernest, Ernest goes, goes to camp. Ernest goes to camp. You know, I remember watching this movie when I was a kid. And you know, the more the plot of this movie, if none of you kids have ever seen it, I highly recommend it. It's a great movie. That it is, you know, it'll motivate you. It motivated me to tears when I was a kid. You know, I was just so sad because Ernest was so dumb. You know, he, t- he goes, the the, the, set, the setting is Camp Kikiki, which is a Native American camp for kids to come and enjoy the summer. And some dozer people, were well, they trying to strip mine it or something? Yeah. So they come in and they try to take over the... They get this mineral that's going to get them so much money, so to speak. Yeah, like they're just trying to get something. And they try to take the camp over and try to get it for their little yeah. mineral thing. And the... And the, and the the old chief, I can't remember his name, but he tries to. Uh, he likes to keep to, it alive. He's wanting to keep tradition alive, right. you know. And, and uh, that can relate to going to football, because as a as a fan and a former alumni, you yourself as right. former alumni and and fan, the tradition at going to football is not winning football games. The tradition is playing your butt off and letting other team know they've been hit. That's Absolutely. the Gornsville. When I think of Gornsville football, that's what I find. I don't think of wins. I don't think of losses. I think of how many times we took a, a good team that was a state championship caliber team and had them on the ropes. You know, my senior year, we had Hartsful. Um, they limped out on the field to get their region championship trophy. You know, we all had our held, we had our uh, head held high. Speaking of something so, like that. Uh, the year, the year two thousand one. Uh, none of y'all probably remember it, but Moore County went. Some state. of them weren't even born. My son was born in two thousand one, so I know they didn't, they probably won't remember. But the anyway, fans anyway, might. Anyway, in two thousand one, uh, I was a junior that year, and uh, Moore County actually went to the state championship that year and played South Pittsburgh. And that very year, uh, Moore County come down here at Tourney Four Field, and uh, they beat us thirty four to thirty two. So yeah. we took them to the wire. Took them, had them on the ropes. And so, so you know, like the, you say, uh, we've took some really good teams over the history of right. football and took them to the wire. My senior year, nobody had scored on Hartsville all season. And this is the 10th game of the season, and we did it twice. And we were tied at halftime 14-14. to And that was our goal all week. Our goal wasn't to win the football game. It was we were going to score on them. That's what we said. We're going to score on them, and that's what we did. And, you know, I can, I'll tell you another good Hartsville story. And I'm not going to bring up any names or mention any names. This is a true story, and this is how deep this rivalry goes. All right, and I, I've told my son this story, and I've told you this story, and I actually introduced you to the guy that did it on the hill a couple weeks ago. Uh-huh. We're in my junior year of high school. We're, we're in on the creek bank. We go to overtime. All right, and th- this is the God's honest truth, and we go to overtime, and this is how serious we were about winning this football game, and and you know our tradition of just wanting to kill your opponent. We go to overtime, and you know our captains go out for the coin toss to see where you, which side you're going to play on. 
Charleston County wins the toss, deferred to Gornsville, which means we were going to be on offense first. And the ref looks at our captain. He says, uh, "Which end? Which end do you want to defend? Which end? Which end zone do you want to play in?" Right. And our captain looks the ref. Never looks the ref now. He's looking straight across at his opponent the whole time. And and he'll tell you that he's from Charleston County, and he'll still tell this story to be the truth. And he looks him straight in the eye, and he says, we're going to stick it in this uh, exploitive, deletive right down here. And, you know, we did the first play. And we ended up getting beat that game in overtime. But, we, he, you know, he was serious about telling them, we're going to stick it in this end zone. And it we know the end zone. We all <laughs> fans and everything on it. Yeah, we're, we're – you know, at Charles County, you got the end with the concession stand, all this, and then this scoreboard end. Well, we chose to put on the scoreboard end to take their fans out of the game. You see what I'm saying? So we played at the opposite end. You know, so uh, anyway, he said, he said we're, we pointed to the end zone. He said, we're going to stick it in this exploitive deletive. Down Which is the end they're on. <laughs> yeah, right down here. So we did stick it right down there in the, on the first play. Uh well, like I said, we didn't have a kicker, and we ended up getting beat. But, hey, those things happen. But this rivalry is serious business with Trousdale County, no matter if they're in our region or not in our region. Uh, we don't like to lose to Trousdale County. And no. over the years, since yeah, I know back in the 80s, we had a big – we used to beat the fool out of them, and Trousdale County wasn't even in the picture. Right. And then in the 90s – they come along, 93, us. 92, 93, they start pouring it on. And from about 90 on, I guess. And they've had some great football teams at Charles County and well-coached football teams. Uh, of course, they do have the new coach this year. That came from Georgia Tech. He was something to do at Georgia Tech. Maybe not a coach, but like a player's assistant or something. Uh, so he knows a lot about the wing tee and things like that. And he's actually coached high school football before. I think in Florida and in Georgia. So, I mean, he's a well-traveled coach, and uh, I got the utmost faith in our coaching staff that they're going to do what it takes to win. And if you can't get jacked up for this, this game is, to me, Hartsville is is just right there with Carthage. I hate to lose the in-county rivalry, but I hate to lose the Hartsville, you know. So, anyway, like – I take this back to somebody. Somebody asked me one time about politics. I don't talk politics a whole lot. Somebody asked me uh, if I was a Democrat or Republican. I said, "Well, I'll just tell you this: I hate Republicans, but I really hate Democrats." You know what I'm saying? And that's that's the way I feel about it. A politician in general, and that's the way I feel about this football game. I I hate Hartsville, but I really hate Carthage. You see what I'm saying? Like we want to win, and not a, not a hate relationship but just something along those lines but you want to win against That's your right. i want to win i don't care who i'm playing but i consider trials county and hartsville you know that's our rival you know they are they, even though they're what 2a now they're still a rival to me because i hate them we never did beat them from the time i was little and of course i have family down there i don't tell a lot of people this i keep up with trials county sometimes i have family uh, that go to all the games and things like that but when it comes Friday night and time to get on that football field, Gorgeville versus Hartsville, we want to kick their booty one That's way or right. another. And I'm just going to throw this out there. He still owes me money from last year, you know, from the bet. <laughs> so, wasn't a whole lot. A few nickels. But still, I won the bet last year. Uh, but anyway, Paul, getting back to this movie, Camp Kikaki. Um Ernest, Ernest at one point says, hey, one monkey don't stop a show, right? That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, one, of the, one of the another big famous line in this movie, he said, they ain't going to get this what? Camp. Tell them how they said it, Paul. They're not going to get this camp. He, Ernest said, they They're ain't, not gonna they get ain't going to get this they camp. They ain't going to get this camp. That's right. They ain't, they gonna ain't going to get this camp. And they ain't going to win this game. You know what I'm saying? That's how you have to approach this. And Ernest was serious about this. They, Ernest was so serious about this, Paul. He got the cooks, had this little, I don't know what it was, some kind of concoction that launched food. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It launched food. They launched a toilet bowl full of explosives, 
off of some kind of jerry rig they made up so i don't know what they did some kind of contraption that that launched uh a toilet bowl full of explosives then uh, they dropped the turtle the turtle parachutes. They, they even put parachutes on turtles <laughs> and launched and they were latching on the people's ears and noses and and they they basically run these strip miners off of camp kikiki and then there was and, the, then there was one more there was one more come up the big bad Lyle El Zeno yeah, earlier in the, the movie Oakland Raiders but tell that story about earlier like, in the what movie what he done to Ernest early yeah uh, after Ernest realized he'd made a mistake and forced the old chief they tricked him into signing the paper and you know it it got Ernest riled up he said I'm gonna go get it back you know so he goes down there and of course he's Lyle El Zeno if you know him he was in the movie. And he was a, like he a had big arms. He had Oakland arms. About, yeah, he had arms about big as your head, you know. Just big old cat. And uh And Ar- anyway, Ernest, he's, Ernest shows some heart though. He, says, Ernest he goes some up heart. there and he says, I want the biggest cat in you this. You know, when you talk thing. about the story of David and Goliath, you could relate that to Ernest and, and Lyle. Lyle. I mean Ernest and little old bitty fella compared to Lyle and he goes up to him the first time. He gets his tail whooped. He got his butt whooped. He knocked him down right off the bat. Three and times. And guess what? He gets right back up. And gets knocked down again. He knocks Ernest down again. Guess what he did? He got right back up He got up right back time. up a third time. And, and then he, he finally got knocked down a third time. He, he showed a lot and, of heart. And he uh, just stayed down for a little while. Yeah, man. He, he was about down for the count then. But, you know, even then. Even then. He Ernest went in. He went into sad Ernest. All right, and he, he cried, and he sang that little song. Gee, How's I'm it? glad it's raining. Yeah. Oh, you know the words, though. warrior needs a place to hide. Yeah, there you go. But it was a good that old one. song. Yeah. I mean, it'll make you want to cry. Like, oh, Ernest is done. You know, camp's gone. They're about to be strip mining this uh, land. And, Anyhow, and the movie, the movie goes Ernest takes the home. He takes the path of the brave. That's what the movie was about. Taking the path of the brave and standing up to what you can't, what you think uh, is bigger than you, stand up to it. And that's and that's and the challenge kind of fight we're, uh, that we're in and for Friday night because a lot a lot of our community, right. a lot of our critics and our fans and th- are saying uh, they're saying this fight's already over. Yeah, I mean you you hear negativity all the time. Charleston <laughs> County's good, and they're like Charles was already got this fight won. But but that ain't but that ain't the truth. You got to have that the Ernest only P. Way. world spirit. I'm gonna say this: the path the, of the brave. That's right, the path of the brave. The the only way I'm gonna describe this, all right. And you take the the Gornsville fans that say that and the negativity, and they're not just Gornsville fans. There's people from Smith County that think Gornsville's beat before they go down there. And, I, and the I only re- people that determine that, if and there's this old, it's, it's, I call it like a Coach Wills proverb because I heard this time and time again. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So if you go down there thinking you're beat, you're beat. That's and, a Gerald Ford. That's a Gerald Ford. Uh, uh, line. I don't know who come up with it. Coach Wills taught it to me and. You know, I've told my children this. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. That's just the Speaking way it is. Speaking of uh, Coach Wills, uh, I got I got a little Coach Wills line too. Uh, uh, we was in the same boat in 2001 as you guys are on Friday night. Uh, it was week four. We we was one and two, just like you guys are. Yep. And, and we was taking on a three and old uh, Greenback Cherokee team that was number four in the state. And... Uh, of course, everybody was down, and they was one and two, and they thought, uh, what chance do we have? And here comes Coach Wills up. Uh, he, uh, he comes up to us in practice, and he says, no excuses. He says, uh, I don't care if they're 100 and old. He said, no excuses. I, I want you guys to go out there Friday night, and I want you to hit these guys. And if you'll go out there and hit these guys, we can win this daggum ball game. Hey, that, sometimes that's all it takes. It's not about who's the most talented. It's about who's the most physical. And and you don't have to be very big to be physical. And i tell you and, what, boys. Uh, uh, we went out there that night, and we was aggressive, and we hit these boys. And, right. and before we knew it, we looked up that scoreboard, and we was up on these folks 35 to nothing. That's right. <laughs> so... so so that's what you got to do Friday night. Yeah, who knows? Just uh, go out there and be physical with them, and you might look up the scoreboard. And it might say twenty-one nothing Gorgeville. That's right. You never know. Oh, uh, but you've got to be physical. You got to take physical. it to them, and you got to be physical on every play. It's forty-eight minutes. It ought I'm to be. Hell. It ought to be forty-eight minutes of pure hell for the other team, and and that's just the way it ought to be. So. 
take the path of the brave and, and you know, stand up to Goliath or Lyle Alzado like Ernest did because he never gave up. Like I said, he had many weapons. He took a ragtag bunch of kids and <laughs> took back the camp, right? Right. And then in the end, they win. The, the guy actually that owned the company was real mad at Ernest. Uh, best I remember, he was going to shoot him, right? Right. He's going to shoot him right in the face. And he's probably about 20 yards away from him with a big high-powered rifle. And uh, what was it? If he had faith, the he knife wrote down, the, kni- the knife would not cut him, right? If you have faith, he said, if you have faith, the knife will not cut you. I ain't right. I just memorized it. You know, like I just uh, taking bits and pieces from what I remember in the movie. If you have faith. Uh, if you have faith, the knife will not. And it said, you. if he had courage. If you have courage, the rock wouldn't hit. The rock would not break, break you. Wouldn't break him. Wouldn't break him. Yeah, there you go. If you have courage, the rock will not. Break and what was the other one? There was. Uh, and if you have something about heart. If you have heart, uh, the arrow wouldn't catch. The you. arrow will not catch you. Yeah. So uh, an old Indian Friday, proverb. Taking that to Friday night. Uh, if you have heart, faith, and courage. They won't catch you, they won't break you, and they won't, what was the other one? <laughs> cut him, I guess. And they won't cut you. Because the other one's a blade. One was a blade. <laughs> so so they won't cut yeah. you, catch you, or or, or break you. So uh, you got to have heart, courage, you gotta have and heart. faith. So be like Ernest P. Worrell. When you go out there on Friday night, think of Ernest P. Worrell, Jim Varney. And, and if you ain't seen the movie, uh, we would heart. advise you to watch that movie and and know what kind of heart and courage the man showed. That's right. I mean, it that was a as a kid that was a motivating movie for me. You know, he, Ernest never gave up, and in, in the end, he succeeded. And sometimes that's all it takes. Well, my favorite movie as a kid growing up, the one that motivated me because I was always a small kid and at one hundred and sixty pounds. And Lucas. I was and I was kind of like the run. Lucas. I was kind of like the run of my class. So the movie that really motivated and what, me. And wasn't Lucas? No, the movie that really motivated well, me as a kid, being a small guy, was Rocky Ford. Because Rocky, Rocky. Rocky Sylvester Sloan, he's kind of a big underdog. Sylvester he Sloan. Up, he goes up against no. Ivan Drago, this big monstrous Russian. And he keeps his I will his break booty. you. Is that what he said? And the, and the Russian probably said what Trouds will say to y'all Friday night when y'all in there doing your coin toss or something uh, and, and you're looking at them and they got all their pretty girlfriends and everything on the field they'll probably say I must break you yeah he, got, <laughs> he didn't know and then Rocky looks at him and he says go for it I still think Ernest goes to camp is as motivating as Rocky when it when you the he message when you break it down the message is just as strong maybe not in those form in that form but uh that's a strong message coming from that movie. Right. One monkey don't stop a show. That's what he's. I remember that line. I just remember that one. Plain right. as day. One monkey don't stop a show. And and the fact is, uh, uh, they, they they probably basically got three monkeys, but uh, but three monkeys. Hey, they they are three athletes. They they they're, they got three well trained monkeys. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it, they are athletes. But, but these monkeys, they uh, they can they can hop from tree to tree. So you better you better uh, you better get out hey, there and, gonna, get, and not try to steal their banana from them. They're <laughs> going to throw the ball. They're going to throw the ball. And they're going to throw it well. They're going to run the ball. They're going to run it well. Um, I think we're going to have to whip them. Our, our front five are going to have to whip them. Yeah, and we definitely got to get pressure. That's where the pressure battle up front on the quarterback. That's and, where the battle is going to be won and, and lost is right there on the front five on offense and come defense. Come to think of it, a football is kind of in the shape of a banana in a roundabout way. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, if you think about it, maybe our defense uh, needs to go. Uh, I don't know if you guys like fruit or not, but uh, you need to you need to tr- treat this football well, as a banana and, and say I don't want y'all to have my banana. I want well, to take a banana a, from you. You had a joke about the yellow jackets. You want to share that? That with us, you told me a joke a couple weeks ago. Yeah, there's a, there's this joke that I had. It said, uh, uh, "Can bees fly in the rain?" And the, and the correct answer is only if they have their yellow jackets oh, on. If they have their yellow jackets on. So the main so, thing we need to do Friday night, uh, right they, off the bat, is uh, strip them of their yellow jackets and take it off so they can't fly. Well, if it's raining, and it, you know, it won't make no difference. They won't have no need for a yellow jacket. Like the man, who was it? Curious George, man in the yellow hat. Yeah, yeah. I used to watch that when I was a kid too. 
And uh, my but daughter, I mean, my daughter, my youngest daughter really loved Curious George when she was little. I mean, every day, Curious George. I watched anyway, every episode. Anyway, for all our fans out there, we're a comedy show and we're also a, a football show. So we just pretty much talk about hey. whatever we want to talk about. <laughs> well, we try to be serious. Paul's got this new play drawn up. And, the you double know, flat pass. we really haven't discussed this yet, but we're going to. Uh, we're going to wind this show up here in a few minutes, but we're going to let Paul. Uh, the interview he talks about, he talks about the double flat pass. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on him here. There we go. We got a good view of it. We got a decent view of it. and um, uh, you really, got your, what, really what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to have to change it up from what I got on the paper because. Uh, it's an, uh, I pointed out earlier that this play is probably illegal because wow. you can't have two forward passes. I'm gonna have to change it up. I'm gonna have to change it up from what uh, what we got on the paper and what we're actually gonna do. We're probably gonna have to bring in order to make this work. We're probably going. Well, we, well, they want to do it with Skyshin to to Bill, so we'll we'll do it with. Skyshin. Whoever's got a good arm could do so, this. So Skyshin could probably pull it off, but because I seen him pull this play off in the B team game and, and and make it work, so I think he can pull this play off, but. What we'll have to do is we'll have to bring him in motion and kind of lateral him the ball behind the line of scrimmage and then let him throw it down the field to uh, 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 Washer. Bill. Bill, oh, Bill. Cousin, cousin Bill. Yeah, to Cousin Bill Washer. Uh, and they're cousins, so they should have good chemistry. So I think <laughs> I, I think that Skyshin and Bill can make this play work and uh, yeah. and get some you know, we had on a, the board. We had a play similar to this, but – that's not really going to be the double flat pass. You could throw it out to the flat as long as he's. It's a backwards pass. Does okay, that we'll sense? call it. We'll call it the jet lateral pass. Or something. I like the double flat pass. I think it would work. But but I I give this play the name. Uh, I actually told Murray to to radio it in to uh, to Davy and call this play. <laughs> call it the Dairy Queen. So 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 when you when you hear Dairy Queen, uh, that how did the, it get the, the name? Sign. How did it get the name the Dairy Queen? That's what I want to know. Because I'm just uh, I'm just thinking in my mind that when they throw the ball down the field, he's, taking, he's, taking, he's making a run to the Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> so he but, can stop off for ice cream. He's got plenty of time to catch football. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Just, wide uh, open. Just, you wide open. Just to, Nobody to drive through. That's right. There ain't just, nobody to drive through. You're it's wide gonna be a open. Blizzard. So just, just take your time and trot on down to the Dairy Queen and get you some ice cream. <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> but, uh. They're, they're, uh, if you're if you're taking it toward Trousdale County's little uh, section down there where they got the concession stand, the uh, Dipsy Doodle, what uh, they then, got down then, there? Then, then I don't know if they got any ice cream or not down there, but uh, they might have but you might be able to jump the fence and go down there and get ask you for a bowl of ice cream. <laughs> say we just we'll run the Dairy Queen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but uh, we'll call it the Dairy Queen anyway because we got. We'll just call some, it the Dairy Queen. We got to come up with some crazy ass play to, uh, name for it, just uh, <laughs> just so they ain't got a clue what, uh, what we're doing. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. You always want to name your plays something strange where the other team, when you holler it out, well, they ain't got a clue. You have colleges now. They hold up pictures of signs, and it's got different pictures on it. Well, maybe we need to get uh, get uh, get old Paul Martin on the, just on the, hold on the fence, up. just hold up a dirty queen sign. I know a good sign maker. Uh, Paul's now the employee of a good sign shop. Well, yeah. maybe we ought to get this going, just get a, get a couple of signs and just and carry it up. You can hold up the dairy queen sign. <laughs> and yeah. hold it up whenever we figure, figure it's time to run it. I want to know where we can get some Camp Kikaki shirts before Friday night. I don't know if that's possible. Maybe we have to make our own. We might can. Maybe Jenny Ford can get a hold of that. Maybe we maybe on the front it could say Camp Kikaki, and on the back it could say they're not going to get this camp. They ain't going to get. The, they ain't going to get this camp, are they? <laughs> right. Heck no. Well, all right, Paul. We've had a pretty good time today recording. Right. Oh. Uh, Looking forward to Friday night. Are you jacked up? I've been jacked up for days. You jacked up. You got yeah. your good preaching message. We know Thursday yeah. night we're going to have a home game with the junior high. Against Watertown. Go check that 6:30. out. Stop at the concession stand. Get you some popcorn, a hamburger, hot dog, nachos. Just whatever. Uh, whatever floats your boat. And support the band or the basketball team. One's on one end of the field and one's on the other. And maybe Coach Patty will get that oompa loompa uh, play I, under. I, he's had plenty of time to draw this up. Now, whether he's got the talent to run it, uh, he's got a pretty talented group of kids. But, or, or, I mean, know, sometimes got, it comes down to what you have to work with in your Coach means. Coach Patty, we got the oompa loompa, and, and you might even uh, you might even want to try this play. That we he might could try the Dairy might Queen. might try the Dairy Queen. <laughs> Dairy Queen. I mean, I'm sure you got some athletes. Uh, I'm sure the Trace and Davis kid can throw the ball. So, yeah. uh, 
So I mean, maybe uh, uh, let's take. Maybe they might want to uh, take some of our inspiration and run the Dairy Queen. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we could <laughs> next week we'll drop the Burger King. How about that? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll think of something for Burger maybe King. Maybe it'll be. A- Probably a whopper of a play. What do you think? Yeah, a whopper of a play. <laughs> you just drew up something that's going to be like a blizzard. You know, it's going to hit them like a blizzard, ain't it? Yeah, it's going to hit. The, it's going to hit the yellow jackets like a blizzard down to the ice cream shop <laughs> to the Dairy Queen. Well, all right. That's uh, that's all the time we got for this week, and we'll see you next and this week. This has been Paul Martin and Rusty Burton, and thank you for listening to In the Huddle. Good sign off line. You're getting better at that every week, buddy.